We've got quite a bit of SpaceX intel to cover today, from multiple news stories concerning Starship to debriefing this week's Starlink launch. Oh, and not to mention today's double header honorable mention, one of which I have been waiting no less than three months to share with you. So let's get to it. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Last week we left off when SpaceX was in the midst of pressure testing their nose cone header tank. Well, later that night, tests went forward starting with liquid nitrogen and no signs of failure were reported. Then a second pressure test to failure using water was performed and the aftermath of that purpose-driven failure showed Starship was now in need of a new nose job. Soon after the header tank tests, a newly designed test tank was transported from the shipyard down Highway 4 to the launch site. And Elon Musk, like last week, has been seen sticking around Boca Chica with his security team. Apparently, lots of exciting stuff going on. But this time, the fuel tank was first filled with water to 7.5 bar before springing a leak at the weld, which is an improvement from a previous test to 7.1 bar. But that leak was soon repaired and retested at cryo temps using liquid nitrogen. At these low temperatures, the steel alloy doubles in strength. But again, it was the welding itself that had cause for uncertainty. If you remember back to just a few weeks ago, Elon said that 8.5 bar would eventually be needed for crewed flights. Well, given the new construction methods SpaceX began using, this was a chance to take another step closer to that goal. SpaceX tested the tank, again to failure, and the resulting explosion gave a familiar, but still awesome show. The results? How about a convenient 8.5 bar? Good job, SpaceX Boca Chica team. Now that this pressure issue, an obstacle worthy of hurtling from the get-go, has been for the most part solved, SpaceX is now ready to officially begin building Starship SN1. And by begin, I mean they've already begun. The first two domes are complete, a couple rings appear to be stacked, and a Raptor was spotted on the premises. Maybe it was lost and needed directions to McGregor, or maybe SpaceX is preparing to work on Starship's engine mount section. And while we're on the topic of Starship, here's some pretty noteworthy news. SpaceX is in negotiations with LA officials to build a new Starship rocket factory. Yeah, you heard that right. Sound familiar? For those of you that aren't aware, in 2018, SpaceX closed down their Starship facility at the port of LA and moved development to Boca Chica, Texas, which is where we're at now. It didn't become public as to why exactly SpaceX decided to close down the site, but many speculated it was due to California taxes and regulations. Well, SpaceX CFO Brett Johnson reportedly apologized to the LA City Council two weeks ago for backing out of the original deal, and added that SpaceX had a new vision for developing Starship at the time. The move to Boca Chica did happen soon after SpaceX decided to literally scrap the carbon composite design and switch to stainless steel. SpaceX already owns eight acres in the outer harbor of San Pedro, but would add 18 more on Terminal Island in the port of LA if this deal goes through, which should be by February 20th. Furthermore, SpaceX wants the LA site to be up and running in the next 90 days. So what reason would SpaceX have to want to return Starship development to California? Well, first of all, the port of LA is a port, and its location on the water is beneficial for transportation purposes. Of course, with that being said, Boca Chica is also located on the coast. And by the way, this doesn't necessarily mean SpaceX has plans to close down the Boca Chica sites. Also, the majority of SpaceX's 6,000 employees do work out of Hawthorne, California, which is just a short driving distance away from the port of LA. And although this is just speculation, many are probably reluctant to move down to South Texas. It's hot down there. But I'll be keeping an extra eye on the situation as it develops, and obviously I'll be keeping you guys in the know as well. Let me know what you think about all this. Comment below. And the last thing concerning Starship, Meizawa, the Japanese billionaire funding a heavy portion of Starship's development, and soon to be the first Starship passenger, apparently had reservations from the beginning about doing a reality TV show that would hook him up with a date for his trip to the moon. Miyazawa decided to cancel the show and apologize to the 27,000 women who applied online. He's sorry, you bunch of moon diggers. After days of weather delays, that rhymes. This week, SpaceX launched their fourth batch of Starlink satellites upon a reused Falcon 9 rocket. The fire stick lifted off from Slick 40 out of Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and successfully landed on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, although I've never seen those legs spread so wide before. But still, she was brought back to the port in one piece. And for the first time in SpaceX webcast history, they streamed live the catch of a fairing on Go Miss Tree. So that was pretty sweet of them to do. Unfortunately, Miss Chief had to fish her fairing half out of the water. But still, 
quite the achievement considering these fairings parachute from space for 45 minutes into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. This was SpaceX's third successful catch, and it's probably worth mentioning that the payload, the 60 Starlink satellites, did deploy without so much as a hiccup. Oh, and check this out. The drogue shoots from what I assume to be the Dragon capsule of the M-Flight abort test, given the lack of scorch marks on the hatch, were found along Florida's coastline by a civilian. Sell those things on eBay, I'll buy them. Stick them on my car in case I ever drive off a cliff. For the month of February, we have two Starlink launches scheduled, but for March, we could have as many as one SpaceX launch a week. NASA announced the date of March 2nd for CRS-20, the final resupply mission to the International Space Station using the current version of Cargo Dragon. CRS-21 will be the first to use a modified version of a Crew Dragon capsule. Also, SpaceX is hoping to reach Falcon 9's 100th launch by the end of 2020. And now, it's time for today's honorable mentions. Okay, first up, I want to do a quick little diddly on the NASA controversy that's been going around these last few weeks because it does kind of concern SpaceX to an extent. On January 24th, the House Science Committee introduced its controversial NASA Authorization Act that directly impacts NASA's Artemis program, a plan to return astronauts to the moon and eventually on to Mars. Specifically, the House bill means to redirect the plan to return to the moon by 2024 to 2028 instead and it more heavily emphasizes the need to go to Mars in 2033. Furthermore, and more importantly, the written legislation calls for government-owned landers, as opposed to commercially-owned landers, to be integrated onto an SLS rocket. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine voiced or typed his concerns in a statement on NASA's website, writing, quote, I am concerned that the bill imposes some significant constraints on our approach to lunar exploration. In particular, we are concerned that the bill's approach to developing a human lander system as fully government owned and directed will inhibit our ability to develop a flexible architecture that takes advantage of the full array of national capabilities, government and private sector, to accomplish national goals." End quote. Despite the seemingly vast amount of people, companies, and agencies across the space exploration spectrum calling for the House to withdraw the proposal, the committee has recently approved it. The chair of the subcommittee and lead sponsor of the bill, Oklahoma Democrat Representative Kendra Horn, defended the bill by stating that the intent is to take a fiscally responsible approach of focusing the moon efforts on the goal of being the first nation to set foot on Mars, and that NASA can still go to the moon sooner than 2028 if they do so safely. Republicans, who are the minority in the House, commented that it would not be the NASA reauthorization that they would have offered. Instead, they say they would have strengthened the use of public-private partnerships. However, members on both sides of the political aisle will continue to refine the bill. Okay, now on to what I really wanna talk about. What I have been dying to share with you guys for at least three months. My new eccentric merch, dubbed Jolly Rocket. <clears throat> so over the past several months, I think since like October, I've been working back and forth with artist Sean Jenner, who's also an eccentric member of this channel. And together we brought the idea of a space pirate theme design to fruition. See, the thing about me is, like all of you, I love SpaceX. But I've also always had a love for pirates and that rad-looking Jolly Roger flag of theirs. So I wanted to see if I could combine the two and at the same time give a little bit of a nod to the movie The Martian. And thanks to Sean, I absolutely love what we came up with. The dude is an artistic stud. I mean, just check out the sweet shirt. It's even got space eccentric written on the back and a font that I can't pronounce. So if you find yourself to be a rebellious nerd, like Elon Musk, really, and if you'd like to own any Jolly Rocket merch, Check out the link below and pick your poison in our Teespring store. We've got shirts, stickers, mugs, posters, blankets, and more. Mmm, Kevin's Cups. Make any drink drinkable. You're an idiot. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you, eccentric patrons and members, for your continuous support of my work. Y'all are really great people, and I really enjoy chatting with you guys. And thank you, viewers, for stopping by and watching my stuff. Be sure to like, subscribe, yada, 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 YouTube jargon. And, and be sure to have a great weekend, okay? Okay. And until the next one, Godspeed. Godspeed.